Alrighty, now that we've just about finished the paneling, we're going to go ahead and jump in on the engine components. And like I've said before a couple different times, this is going to be pretty tedious. We've got quite a few parts to do this section. Uh, this first part, as part A, will hopefully try and get a fair bit done. And I'm going to start by working on some of these sections right in here. Namely, I want to start laying in some of this exhaust system in here. And then I'll also go ahead and start doing some of these pieces, the round piece. Uh, I'm going to put in the wheel, which will base on this one here. We'll probably just duplicate these components and then modify it to work. And so really in this first part, I'm going to try and get a lot of the, the major details in place so that we can start getting a better idea of how everything's going to work. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll put in the, the little details as we go to kind of bring it all together. But before we start doing that, I want to get a lot of the major pieces in so that to start bringing it all together. And like I said, the area that we're going to be focusing on in this chapter is basically everything from here to here. So you can kind of see in this area everything that we're going to be focused on, including this big bar here, the wheel, this piece in here, these paneling, the exhaust, all the tubing that's running in and out through here. So we've got a lot to do, but we'll hopefully try and do it piece by piece and make some good progress. It's going to take quite a while, but you know, with a little bit of patience and some work, we'll get it all done. So let's start off just at the front. Um, honestly, one of my favorite pieces on this entire section is actually this round drum right in here. And so that's actually where I want to go ahead and start. And even though we can't really see it in the concept, and you know, maybe David or Roy uh, didn't even intend this to be a round drum of sorts, but I really like it. And so we're going to start there. And I'm going to go ahead and separate out some of these pieces. Because currently, if we had tab to go into edit mode, you'll notice that we've got a lot in here to work with. And since we're going to have a lot of different objects, I want to separate some of this out to make it a little easier to navigate. And the way that I'm going to start by doing that is to separate out the tubing pieces. So let's first just hit L while hovering over this piece and this piece. And then we'll go ahead and hit P and separate by selection. Then I also want to separate all of the wheel components, which are all of these right in here. And again, I will hit P and separate by selection. And then I also want to isolate some of the back pieces. So let's select these ones here, and we'll P, actually let's select this one as well, P separate by selection. Uh, and that ought to be pretty good for the time being. Then I'm also going to go ahead and separate this one, and again hit P and separate by selection. And then also let's actually go ahead and select the base in here and separate it as well. And so now we've got all of these different sections that we can work with to better isolate our focus. So starting in on this piece, I'm first gonna go ahead and hit shift space to unmaximize my view, double check, I do have a mirror modifier on this. And since this is a circular piece, this, a mirror modifier can actually be a bit of a hassle because uh, in order to scale this in any kind of circular direction, equally, you'll notice right now it scales more this direction, I have to actually position my cursor at this point. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and leave edit mode first and click apply on my mirror modifier such that I can now scale this perfectly out while making some changes on here. I can re-add the mirror modifier later on, you know, if I start doing some symmetrical detailing. But to get started, I also want to go ahead and add in my subsurf modifier and I'll set that to level two and an optimal display. And then I'll also select everything and W and shade smooth. Now let's take a look at our concept. Uh, to do that, I'm just going to switch over to layer, we'll just go over to layer 4 that doesn't have anything on it. And we can see right in here, you know, we've kind of got what looks to be almost like a tube, some tubing running around that outer edge. And then we also have some struts in here and some tubing as well. And so let's go ahead and do that. So going back to layer 1, I first want to set up um, a pathway for that tubing to follow right in here. And the way that I'll do that is let's first just select this loop. Uh, sorry, this one here, and I just want to scale it out to be equal with that. So I just, while I'm in uh, vertex snapping mode, as you can see here, by hitting Control Shift Tab or choosing it down here. So I'll just hit S and hold down Control and snap out to that vertex, and that will immediately snap that together. Then I can also go ahead and add in an edge loop to sharpen this up by hitting Control R, slide that up. 
I'll add another one on this side, and that will quickly make that nice and sharp. And then I actually want to go ahead and add in two more edge loops by hitting Control R, scrolling up once, and then I'll hit Alt S and scale those down along the normals a little bit. And that just creates a groove that will allow that tubing to follow very nicely. Let's also go ahead and sharpen this up now. And what I want to do is I want to create this as a nice flat edge. So I'll first add in a loop right across like this. And then I will go ahead and select this edge loop and I'll hit Shift E and point eight. And I'll do the same thing with this one down here. So again, that's just Alt, uh, Alt right click to select those to add in the loop. And for the time being, let's go and hit Shift Space to hide everything else on here. And then let's sharpen up this right back here. And now we'll probably end up removing these vertices back in here because we probably won't even be able to see them. But for the time being, we'll leave them just in case. And that's pretty much all I want to do for that piece because it's going to be mostly hidden. But you notice we've got these two beans right in here that I want to lay down. And I've also got this two bean right through here. So let's first go ahead and hit tab to go into that moment again. I'm going to select these two loops by alt shift right clicking on them. I'm going to hit shift A and cursor to selection. Then I'll hit tab to leave edit mode. And I'm going to hit three or one to go into front view. And I'm going to hit shift A and add in a curve and circle. I'm actually going to use curves for most of the tubing in here, except for cases like the exhaust, because it'll allow me to very easily adjust the diameter of the circle. I can send the tubing any way that I want very easily without having to worry about the mesh. And if you are not familiar with curves, this will start to make sense here in just a moment. But from the front view, let's just hit Shift A, add in a curve and a circle. On this circle, let's go ahead and uh, hit F6. Whoops. Try that again. For some reason, I've got a grease pencil stroke that keeps adding in, so I'll just hit D and then right click to delete it. Shift A, add in a curve and a circle, and then I'm going to hit F6 and just change the align to view like this. And then I'll hit tab to go into edit mode, and I will scale this down to roughly fit the shape here. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit more, then I'll left click, I'm going to hit tab to leave edit mode, and I'm going to rotate my curve in object mode, because this way, if I ever need to scale along a local axis, uh, it will still fit, rather than if I were to rotate this around in edit mode, it wouldn't necessarily. And so this way, it just keeps things a little bit more controlled if I need to. And here in just a moment, uh, we'll go ahead and add in the best part of the curves. And actually, let's go ahead and do that now. And that is we can actually add thickness to the curve, basically making a torus, by going over to the object data. And we're going to increase the bevel right here. And you'll notice that it just immediately adds thickness. But currently, we just have basically a, you know, a triangle that's being uh, extruded around the circle. And in order to make this a tube, we need to turn off the front and turn off the back, and that will immediately turn it into a full circle. Now, currently, there's only four vertices in that circle, so we can actually increase the resolution of the bevel by adjusting it right here. And I'm just going to set that resolution up to two, should be good enough for the time being. Uh, or maybe, you know, we could go ahead and set it to three if we wanted. And then we can also go ahead, since we've got so many around. Uh, this direction, let's also turn the preview resolution down to, say, 8 to make that about even. And so the beauty of this curve is now I have the thickness in here, but I can hit tab to go into edit mode and grab these points and move them around any way that I want and work with this. So very, very cool and allows me to work with this quite easily. So uh, one thing you will notice is currently... Uh, you're not able to rotate the individual points unless you select the endpoints here. And so if you need to do that by rotating this, you can select everything, hit A, or sorry, not H, but V, and change the handle type to aligned or a different type, and then you can rotate it by selecting the middle point. Now, if you need to adjust the thickness at any point or along the entire thing, you can just select a point or all the points and hit Alt-S. And that will increase or decrease the thickness as you wish. So this also allows us to control it very easily. You can also do that at individual points. And so this is where making our tubing is going to be pretty easily easy. So now I just want to move it back along its local Z axis by hitting G and double tap Z.
to bring it back in here to fit that groove a little bit more. And then let's also add a little extra thickness to this side by selecting in edit mode here. I'm going to select this side and I'm just going to hit G and I guess I can't, let's see, if I hit uh, alt space, I can change the orientation to normal and then hit G and double tap Z and move that out a bit like that. And then I can add in another loop here and another loop there. And that will just bring that together a little nicer. Okay, if I hit Alt H to unhide everything, I can start to see how things are coming together. I'm going to give this curve a material of the light gray. And then what I want to do is do this tubing, or actually, no, rather than doing that tubing, we're going to go ahead and make this fit with this. So what I want to do is cut out a section in here. And this will actually be pretty easy to do. I'm just going to hit Control R, add a new loop cut that lines up right with that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just select these vertices here that are going through here. I'm going to hit X and delete vertices such that I now have a hole right here. And on this hole then, I'm going to select, say, all of these vertices here on the top. And I'm going to hit E to extrude. And uh, let's see, maybe scale. I'll take this up along the well, let's see, actually, I guess I need to just go in and snap first to that vertex. And then I will deselect this one here and snap over to that vertex. And then this one, I just need to average between these two points. So I'm going to select these two vertices, hit Shift S, cursor to selection. And I'll select this vertex and Shift S and selection to cursor. And that will just merge those up together. Now, I don't have auto merge editing on anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and enable that from the mesh menu. And then I'll select everything and W and, oops, not hide, and said remove doubles. I'll remove those two that I just added. And now what I need to do is go ahead and sharpen up this edge. So I'll first add another loop cut across like this, and maybe another one on the other side. But you'll notice that I've now got this kind of curving in here that really doesn't look good. So I'm going to select these perimeter edges right in here. I'm going to hit Shift E and 0.8 to sharpen that up. And that will almost solve it, but then I need to select these ones as well in the corners. And, oops, there we go. And there we go. Shift E and 0.8. And that will also help to clear that up. Now, I might need to go ahead and just remove this edge loop. And that will help fix some of that distortion that we were getting in there. And then in order to help solve this rounding again, I'm also going to add another edge loop to slide right up like that. And that will really clear out or cl clean up that a lot. And actually, if I... No, yeah, I definitely don't want that. Although I suppose I could probably fix that. If I go and increase that whole loop... Nope, that does not work. Okay, so I'll undo that and just leave it just like that. That'll be close enough, you know, since this is a, a bottom detail... It's really not going to matter. You're not going to see that a lot of the times. And so we'll just leave it as is. I do want to go in and we're going to go ahead and crease this outer loop as well just a little bit just to help make this corner or this edge a little bit more consistently shaded. So there we go. That helps a lot. And that looks pretty good just like that. So I think I will just leave that as is. Although I might... Um... Yeah, we'll just leave that as is. What I want to go ahead and do now is to do the wheel strut, this piece right in here, the support, and the wheel. So let's first focus on the actual wheel piece. Uh, I want to go ahead and use this wheel as a starting point. And so I'm just going to select it, and I'm going to select our mechanisms for it. Oops, actually, I'm going to first select this, go in here, select this piece, select those as well. And I'm going to hit P and separate by selection, uh, just because I want it to be part of these as well. And so now I will select all of these. And I'm going to hit uh, Shift D to duplicate them over this way. And it looks like I had a couple extra edges in here. So I'll just delete those. Uh, but I want to move this over here. And then I need to move these across the x-axis to roughly the right position, somewhere right about in here. 
and we'll make some adjustments on the wheel, of course, to make this work with our design. Uh, but in order to get the mirror modifier to work, obviously you can see that I need to make some adjustments here. Let's first hit tab to go into, uh, let's see. Let's hit control or shift S and cursor to selected, which will align it uh, from the X axis here. And then I'll hit three to go to side view and I'm gonna reposition the cursor right about in here. And then I'll hit uh, control or shift, control alt shift C and origin to 3D cursor just so that that's more relevant to where it's actually at. And then what I need to do is to add in the empty like we did on these pieces in here. I need to add in an empty along the central axis. So I'll hit shift C to recenter my cursor and then I'll reposition the cursor from the side view approximately at the wheel and hit shift A and add an empty. And this empty is going to be our mirror point for the mirror modifier. So let's go in here. And what I'm going to do on this mesh, I'm going to hit shift space and uh, and I want to go over to the modifiers. And actually, rather than changing this modifier, we're going to add in a second mirror because I want to keep this mirror to cross like this to have the two supports. But I'm going to add in a second one and I will add it above the uh, above the subsurf. And then I'm going to set this mirror object to that new empty, which, which let's go ahead and name this real quick. We can see from the object field here, we can name this empty underscore uh, back, or we'll do wheel underscore back underscore mirror. And then let's select our object. And we're going to go into the mirror modifier and choose that empty from here in the field. And we can see it's this one right here. And so that will add in a second mirror across there. And we need to go ahead and do that same thing on most of these. So on the wheel, we'll add in the second one, move the subsurf down, choose that empty, uh, this one here, and again on these pieces as well. This is one of the great things about modifiers is that you're not limited to just, you know, a single one of the same type. You can actually use multiples to get these kind of effects. And I'll add in another one here. Again, move it up and choose that object as the mirror point. And there we go. So now that immediately adds that across. We'll save our file, hit three to go to side view. Let's hit shift space to maximize our view. Let's go ahead and select this empty. And just so it's consistent with the rest, let's hit M and two to move it to layer two. And there we go. Or actually we can see this one's on layer three. Let's go ahead and move that to layer two as well. Just so that all of our empties are on layer two. We'll hit three to go back to side view. And what I want to do now is to work with this uh, suspension system to make it work with this mesh and also with the design. So let's first go into edit mode and let's just delete this previous one that we'd added. Uh, I don't like it anyway, even though it's perhaps a little more consistent with our design. We're just going to hit X and delete vertices. We can also delete our stand in wheel right there. And then let's go ahead and select this piece and we're going to move it along the Y axis or at the X axis a little bit to better line up with our pivots right here. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Um, what I want to do now is to reposition this a little bit to make it work. And just trying to think how exactly I want to do that. Um, let's see, let's take a good close look at our design. We can see that this is supposed to come down right in here. And I think what I'll do is to go ahead and select these parts and we're going to position them uh, more over here maybe. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm gonna select this, this piece right here. I'm gonna hit shift S and cursor to selected. So now I can use this as a pivot point. So I'll hit period to rotate around the cursor and I'll hit R and just rotate this around. And that will bring that up over there. And let's maybe rotate this a little bit more. With that rotated approximately in place, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it where it's at for the time being. Uh, we definitely need to make some adjustments to it in order to make it work. And actually, in fact, 
uh, that actually won't work rotated around like this because if we think about this, as this pulls down, this needs to get longer. And so this actually needs to, say, start over here and then slide over as it pushes down. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're just going to tentatively uh, rotate this back around to, say, somewhere right in here. And then I'm actually going to just leave this where it's at for the time being until we get a better idea of what we want. Uh, and probably we'll actually redo this completely and add in another piece right in here that better fits with our design. But for the time being, until we decide exactly what we're going to do with it, let's go ahead and move on to this piece. And so what I want to do on this piece is to kind of reposition this a little bit. Uh, notice we've got this kind of... Uh, support right in here that will support the pivot of our wheel. But if we were to put it right back here, it would seem to me that the wheel actually would not be long enough or this, this support would not be long enough. So we're actually going to reposition this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to take it, take this edge loop, I'm going to hit Control E, edge slide, take it back just like that. And then I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to pull it down to about like that. It's like this one, pull it over there. And then these pieces. Um, this part actually doesn't work at all with the functionality, so let's actually just hit X and delete those faces, and then we'll reselect this part and hit F to fill in a face there. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and move, I'm going to delete this edge as well, so I'll just delete those vertices, and then I will select these ones, refill a face, and refill a face. This way, um, our cylinder is basically going to be attached in the center of this this support, as you can see right in here. Maybe I can move some of these over just a little bit to better center that, move that over. I can take this edge up to say right in there, and then I'll take this one over, about like that, and like that, and then this one to right in there. And that ought to work fairly well, I would think. I can kind of reposition these a little bit to put them approximately centered. And then I want to go ahead and and I'll move these just a little bit to kind of fit in with the design. Uh, and that actually looks pretty good. So now I want to go ahead and hit Shift Space. And I'm going to add in a Subsurf modifier to this. And we'll set the divisions to level 2, Optimal Display, select everything, W and Shade Smooth. And then we're going to start kind of, I want to put in a border around this whole thing. And so the way that we'll do this is first add in a loop up to this edge. And I want to keep it about this distance. Then we'll do the same thing right in here, and another one right here, and then another one right here, and another one right there. Notice all of these are about the same distance from the edge. And this one back here, we're going to take all the way back inside the paneling, and so we can actually delete those faces. Because then I will go in, oh, and let's also add in, say, to here, and right here, and lastly, right there. So now I'll hit Control tab go into face mode, and I'm just going to select all of these faces. About like this as a starting point, and then I will also select uh, these faces. So I'm using Control and left click to bring up my lasso select, which gives me a, a lot more refined control over my selection. And so you'll notice that I've selected everything, leaving a border all the way around it. So I can now just hit E to extrude and take it in just a little bit along the normals, something like that. And then all I need to do is hit Control tab go back to vertex mode, and I will add in another loop all the way around. Or actually, rather than doing it on that side, because you'll notice that if I do that, some of these edges don't line up correctly. So I'll instead do it on the outside here to sharpen that, and then I will do it on the inside right here. Bring that all the way out, add another one to bring it in. And so now I have a border all the way around it. Now I need to do a little bit of cleanup, obviously. You know, some of these areas need to be thicker, like this. Pull these down. I'll slide these out along the the y-axis, and I need to hit comma so I'm not scaling around the cursor. And then also take 
say these ones out a little bit, scale them back down along the Y to rematch that angle. Uh, I've got some of these up here that need to just go up to make them a little thicker. But that's a real easy way to quickly add in kind of a border all the way around it. And maybe I'll add in another loop right here, such that that's more of a square edge. And same thing right over here. Uh, let's do it right there. And say another one right in here. Take this down a little bit. I'll take these two up. I'll also take these out along the y-axis, and I'll take that those vertices down to match this angle right through here. I'll also go ahead and take these ones down, and then this one out just a little bit. Take that out a little bit along the local z-axis, so it's along the normal. Just thicken that up. And that looks pretty good. So now what I can do is I'll basically add in all the pieces around this, and that will help bring the thickness together. So now I'll select this. I'm going to take this inside or this support piece along the y-axis just a little bit to better center right in there. And then I'll also go in and I'm going to grab my the bolt that I have over here. I'm going to select it and hit P, separate by selection. Then I'll reselect it here and shift select these. I'll hit control J to join those together. And then I will go and hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to select this, move this all the way over here. And I'm going to hit uh, G and snap right to there. And that actually, it doesn't get it exact, but it gets me pretty close. So now I can go ahead and just move this over a little bit, holding down, whoops, except actually when I did that, I auto merged. And so instead, I'll just position these manually approximately. Something like that. I'll slide this over. Slide it in along the x-axis somewhere in there. And then I'm going to just select this, bring it in along the x-axis a bit, then I'll hit E to extrude, take it out just a little, extrude again, and then immediately hit S to scale after hitting E, so I can scale out again, and then I'll hit, do that again, so I'll hit E to extrude, and then before left clicking or hitting enter, I'll just hit S again, which immediately switch me into scale mode, so I can then just scale that out. Then I'll extrude this out again, and in order to go straight out, I'll just hit X, take it out along the X-axis, then one more time, and then I'm going to go ahead and actually give this a pan head, so I'll extrude one more time, and then I will hit E to extrude again, take it out just a bit, scale it down, and then I can just fill in these edges, so I'll select, say, these four, hit F, these four, hit F, and then I'll alt-right click to select these four, since it basically creates an edge loop, and I'll hit F to fill that. And then I'm going to add in a loop, or actually I'll just add in a crease. I'll hit Shift E and 0.8 on that. I'll go ahead and take this edge loop, and I'm going to slide this up to, or actually let's just add in a second one to right there. And that gives me a large pan head uh, bolt to support that. Maybe I'll select this, and I can scale it up just a little bit. And there we go. That looks good, so I'll save that. And I need to add in another edge loop right up to here. I also want to slide this one over a little bit more along the x-axis just to make sure that's nice and sharp. Looks good. Three to go back to side view. I want to add in a big bolt right here. Uh, and I also want to add in a loop right up there to make sure those are nice and sharp and more of a square angle. You can see I also need to add more thickness all the way along here. So I'll just go in, I'll select all these, and I'll hit G and Z, pull them up. I just want to match this thickness right back in here. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll go ahead and pull these up just a little bit such that this is a straighter line. That looks pretty good. I could go ahead and take these back along the y-axis just a little bit to again even out that thickness. Something like that. Uh, I'm going to add in a triangular support back in here that even though we can't see where it's going. Um, let's see, actually, I suppose some of that is not lining up 
very well due to this piece. But I think what I'll do is I'm going to select all of this right in here. And maybe this one right in here. I'm going to hit G, Z, rotate this around the Z axis a bit. Pull it over along the X axis a little bit. And then I'm actually going to delete all of this tubing because we're actually going to do that with a curve. And we'll select all these, hit X and delete faces. So this part will be a mesh, but then this part will be a curve. And that will give us a little better control of all that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this. And then I'm going to select this piece right in, or actually I'm going to hit control tab, go to face mode. I'm going to select this face, hit shift S, cursor to selection. And then I will go ahead and actually let's just select all of this. We're going to hit shift D, right click S and X to scale down along the X axis a bit. Then we will rotate this around somewhere down like that. Maybe we'll scale this along the local Z axis by double tapping Z. Bring that in. And let's go ahead and position it here on the inside edge. Let's go ahead and select this. And I want to bring it out further. We'll also rotate it a bit more. Something like that to give us a place to put this piece. As you can see right here, we'll just slide this over. And then that looks pretty good. I want to position this such that it's basically centered right in here because we're going to put an, a, a bolt through it. We'll select this, hit G, double tap Z, slide it down along the Z axis, maybe scale excluding the X axis, so hit S and shift X, and that will bring that down. And looks like my local Z axis was not actually very accurate. And so let's go in here, hold G, X, or G, hold down control, snap right into there. And that will move that over fairly straight. So now we can see that coming through. And, you know, we could go ahead and select this piece too. And maybe move these back just a little bit. You know, because those are definitely not final. But let's go in here. Uh, actually, we'll go right here. I'm going to select this piece. I'm going to hit Shift D, right click, P, and separate by selection. Then I'll select it. Shift right click to select this. Hit Control J to join those together. Then I'll select this piece. Hit G move it over here. I'm going to scale it down a bit and then I'll move it in. Move it in approximately to right there and it's basically centered now. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and give it the gray material. So go to the materials, select the gray and click assign. I can also remove the yellow and the green material from this mesh as this is only the engine components. That looks good, so I'll save that. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and we're almost done for this part of this video just because, you know, we've got a lot to do. So like I said, I'm just trying to do some of the major pieces. So let's go ahead and do this piece right in here. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And let's just select this. We'll hit P, separate by selection, and then select it in here. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And... Uh, let's see, we will actually, let's just hit shift C, recenter our cursor, and then let's reposition the cursor right about here from edit mode. So then we can hit control alt shift C origin to 3d cursor. And that way when it's, as long as it's lined up along the origin point, we won't mess up our mirror modifier since it's mirroring across the X axis. But now we can rotate this any way we want very easily. Let's go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode. Let's hit shift space and add in our subsurf modifier. And we'll increase that to level two, optimal display, uh, select everything, W and shade smooth. Then I want to go ahead and add in an edge loop right out to that edge, right down to, oops, control E, edge slide. Slide it down in here. Sometimes adding edge loops on circles can be a little finicky as far as getting it to slide correctly. So sometimes I find it easier just to leave the loop right in the center and then add in a second or just to do the edge slide as a second step. I want to go ahead and add in this kind of um, point right in here. And so an easy way to do that is I'll add in another edge loop and then I'll hit S and shift or S and Y to scale that out to match the circle shape. 
and that looks pretty close. You know, it's pretty hard. Sometimes when you add in extra loops around a circle, it's pretty hard to get them accurate. And maybe that looks a tiny bit lumpy. You know, it's hard to say at times, but that's okay. Um, I'm then just going to take this, and I'll take this on the other side. I'll hit S and X, or Y, bring it in along the Y axis. I'll take it down along the Z axis. And then we're going to go ahead and deselect this surface vertex on both sides. And I'm going to hit Shift E and 0.9 or so should give that a good enough crease. And then I'll do the same thing on these edges right here. Shift E and 0.9. And that will give us a fairly good crease right in there. But in order to make this really work, I need to go ahead and add it around this edge as well. So I'll hit Shift E. I'm going to do 0.8 on that. And then I'll do this edge as well. Shift E, 0.8. And then you can see that starts to come together. Uh, we can maybe improve this if we add in another loop. Uh, no, actually, that didn't work at all. Um, maybe we need to go ahead and Shift E, 0.8. Yeah, so we need to go ahead and add in right on these points. So Shift E, 0.8. And on these ones, because what's happening is this face is still smoothed out. And so it's kind of overlapping in here. And so if we just extend back that crease a little bit, we can make it work a little better. So I'll do this on both sides and on here. And I think I messed that one up. No, I got it. Okay, I'm going to add in another edge loop right up to that edge just to sharpen that up a bit. You can see that now looks pretty good. Uh, we will go ahead and I'm going to add in two pan heads right here as well. And so let's just go ahead and select this. We'll select this again. Shift D, P, separate selection, select it. Shift select this, Control J. Then move this over right in here. We'll scale it down. We're going to position it just about like that and then we'll take this in along the x-axis so it lines up about there now i'm going to go ahead and hit period to rotate around the cursor hit shift d right click s y and negative one to just flip that around like so slide that in uh, let's switch over to another layer so we can see our concept a little better and we do have a third point down here but i'm actually not going to worry about adding that I kind of like the two in here, and frankly, if we were to add in the third, we need to redo this in order to make it consistent uh, due to the thirds. But instead, what I'll go ahead and do is, let's see, I'm going to go into here, hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to go ahead and select this edge. I'm going to hit shift D, right click, uh, comma to scale towards individual center, scale this down a little bit. And I'm going to kind of make this piece right in here. So I'll just extrude this out along the y-axis. Then I'll select the whole mesh. And I'm going to slide it out along the x-axis about to there. I'm going to select this, hit E to extrude, rotate this, scale it down, or scale it up, extrude again. And then again. This time I'm going to scale to zero along the z-axis to make that straight. I'll also take this, bring it up like that. Select this one, scale it down, and then extrude around right in here. And actually, it looks like this is just a solid piece, and then this is another piece inside of it. But we'll just do it like this. I'll take that in to right there. And then I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to hit E to extrude, take it in along the x-axis. Uh, and then I will go ahead and take this. I'm going to extrude up to right about here to line up with this edge. And then again, right here and right here. You notice I'm extruding once for each one of these vertices. And again to right there. And then one last time all the way up to here. Because then I can go in and select these edges fill in a face. And you know, we don't necessarily need to know what this is since this is purely a conceptual piece. But 
really we're just trying to add in a bunch of components that look like it makes up a cool engine. Now I'm going to make some changes here. I'm going to slide this back. I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to bring this around. I'm basically going to try and match this curvature right in here. There we go. I'll add in another in or another loop right there just to kind of even out some of the geometry. Slide that over. Slide that over to there. That looks good. Move this over. And I'm going to go ahead and bring these loops. Fill that last face. Uh, let's just take let's take these edges and deselect these ones back here. I'm going to hit SX, scale them along the x-axis, then take them out just a little bit. Slide that one out just a bit. Okay, that just gives me a good stopping point for that. I'm also going to go ahead and select this outer edge. I'll extrude back along the x-axis to right there. And then I will fill in this face. And then I'll select this whole edge and I'll extrude it back in along the x-axis again all the way back. And I can kind of rematch this curvature just a little bit better. Something like that. Okay, I'm going to bring this in here, back. I'm going to go ahead and take this. I want to be sure that these actually overlap. So I'm going to select this edge and this edge. Notice that I'm in wireframe mode, so I can select all the vertices that are behind it as well. And then I'll just pull this back. I'll do the same thing right here. Maybe select these, pull them down just a little bit, so we kind of have a step going on. Uh, I'm also going to take take these and I'm going to scale them down along the x-axis and then I will rotate them slightly, pull them back some more, rotate them a bit more, and I'm just making them fit this angle but then also be set behind that piece. Okay, I want to go ahead and Let's see, we'll save this. Let's see. What I'm going to do on the wheel, I'm going to remove these pieces. I can go in here as well and remove these. And I'll do this just by selecting all these vertices and these vertices. And these, and I'll just hit X and delete vertices, because then I can just select this edge, hit E to extrude, snap to right there, select everything, W and, uh, or to automatically remove doubles. So then I'll just take this edge, and I'll hit V, rip that, then reselect that one there and pull it back along the Y axis just a bit. I'll reselect this loop, hit Shift Space, unmaximize view, go to Materials, and assign the dark gray. And then what I'm going to do is add in basically a pivot point right in here. So we'll actually have basically a guide through here that this will then rotate around. So I'm going to position or I'm going to select, say, this part of the mesh. I'm going to deselect this part. I'm going to hit Shift S, cursor to selection. Actually, you know what? Let's select this part. Shift S, cursor to selection. Now it's centered. Hit Shift A, add in a circle. I'm going to hit F6 immediately, change my vertex count down to, uh, let's do... Let's do 18, and I'll align it to view, and I'll take the size down to 0.25, and then move over and then scale this down a little bit by hitting S. And I'm going to go ahead and immediately hit E to extrude, scale this down into there. I'm going to select the whole circle, and I'll move this back along the x-axis, and basically we're going to move it back to here. So it's going to be a part of the actual piston. I'll extrude this back along the x-axis by hitting E. And I'm going to just take it back to the side of the piston right there. 
I'll select everything, shade smooth. I'm going to add in two edge loops. And by just hit Control R, S, or Control R, then scroll up once, and I'll hit S and X to scale along the X axis so I can just sharpen that up real quickly. And actually, I <laughs> went too far, so it automatically merged. There we go. That will sharpen that up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and delete basically half of the circle. So I'm going to select all these loops. And we'll stop right there. And I'm going to hit X and delete uh, faces for a starting point. And I'll go ahead and select, say, this one as well, and maybe this one. And I'll hit E, to extra, or e X, or excuse me, X, delete face vertices. And there we go. So now if I were to select this whole piece and rotate around the cursor, I'm going to basically put a piece right in here. So this will rotate down about like that, stopping right in here. So imagine that there's a little motorized piece that then it's going to slide down like this. And maybe this ought to be a little bit larger. So let's select, say, all these loops. Let's hit period to scale around the cursor and just scale uh, while well, excluding the x-axis. So we'll first hit S and then shift X, scale this up to right about there. And then I can add in another loop, sharpen that up, add another one on the other side. There we go. That sharpens that up nicely. Let's go in here, and I want to select these vertices. And then I'm just going to extrude them to right there, and again to right there. And that will just merge those together. Although these ones down here didn't... Did they not merge? Oh, no, I just need to add in another loop right down to the edge there to make that work well. There we go. And it seems that I have something weird going on. Let's select this, hit Shift-H. Aha, I have faces on there, so let's just select these faces, hit X, and D, or... Looks like some of these, yeah, some of those merged weird. So undo that last loop cut we did. There we go. We'll re-add that loop cut. Ah, wait, no. Something else is weird. Let's hit Shift-H. And let's hit Tab, go into Object Mode, Shift-H again. And we can see something very weird happened. Let's go in and let's just delete all of these faces. And we will delete all of these faces. And then I will select these again. I'll extrude down to that point and to that point. And there we go. So we can see that part of this is not straight. Somehow this circle got moved in a little or moved out. So let's just select that. And this should all be perfectly straight. So let's just select it deselect that edge, hit S, X, and Z, oops, scaling towards the comma, S, X, and 0, and then select this side, S, X, and 0. I'm not sure what I did. I'm sure that some of you are probably, probably noticed it immediately and were wondering if I'd catch it, and in this case, I did not, so I have no idea what I did, but that's okay. I'm going to select this part, hit X, delete the vertices, then I'll hit Alt H to unhide everything, and then... Uh, what I'm going to do, since you really won't see this, I'm going to add in a loop to right here and another one to right here. And then we'll add in one more to, say, right here and maybe scale it away from the cursor a little bit by excluding the x-axis just to better match our, our loop. We'll do the same thing over here. So again, we just exclude the x-axis and scale away from the cursor just a little bit so that we can keep our circular profile. And then I'm going to go in here, I'm going to select all these loops, I'm going to deselect the edge ones here, and I'm going to hit X and delete faces. Because then we'll go ahead and select this. I'm going to hit E to extrude, just snap it over to the other side. And then I can add in two edge loops and scale these around across the X axis about like that. And now I have a nice track for this to follow. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to basically add in a pin that this will follow. To do that, I can simply just select my uh, pan head here. I'll hit Shift-D, 
move it over. I'll scale it down somewhere right in here. Oops, and I merged it too. I positioned it too close to another vertex, and it automatically merged somewhere about like that. Let's move it over along the x-axis. Position it right in there. And then I'm going to scale up the head. So I'll deselect these inside loops by just shift alt right clicking on them. And this one here, I'm going to hit S and shift X and then just scale that way up to form the head of the there. I'll also go in and I want to add some subtle creasing to these loops. I'll hit shift E 0.5 and again on this one to 0.5. And that just gives me, oh, actually, that looks terrible. Uh, instead, let's undo that. And what we'll do is we'll add in another loop right there and just leave it directly in the center. And that gives me a slightly better uh, transformation that fits a, a circle a little more. So let's go in here. I'm going to add in another loop. Or actually, let's instead, let's go and increase this edge. So hit Shift E, say, just go to 0.5. Do the same thing here, Shift E, 0.5. And on the other sides. And that should work for that. Let's hit Alt H to unhide everything. Let's go ahead and I'm going to select this piece and I'm going to apply, add in the light gray material. And I do apologize for my dog. Okay, now that we've applied the material, let's go ahead and just zoom out and get a general idea of how it's looking. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and call this quits on this section. We'll come back here on part B and start doing some more detail work. We'll start laying in a lot of the tubing and things like that and also try and do a lot more of the, the foundation work, you know, on this piece right in here. Obviously, there's a long ways to go on it, but we will make some progress and keep modeling away.